what I've been working on for the last few weeks is the drop coupler pilot and they call it a cast steel pilot but it really was a composite of a casting that went down the center here on both sides and then the ends were fabricated and I'm assuming that's the Pensy's idea on how to make it um, replaceable if it should get damaged if something would hit it here on the track or something and they could replace just the ends if you look at some of the pictures you'll see welds in this area kind of sloppy welds in this area on some of the pilots um, uh, this was applied in 1940 and stayed on the locomotives till the end now I would say that the M1's had them the K, all K4's, not all K4's most of the K4's had them, some of them still retain their slatted chicken coop they call it chicken coop pilot um, in order to work this you, what you do is you twist this little piece right here which twists up straight like that and then you're able to pull the pin straight through and then once you get it through then it will drop down now it's not balanced right at the moment it, the counterweight up here should have an additional quarter of an inch of steel on either side but when I do that it would come quite close to this side piece here and down inside running through the end here right out through the end and then in, into this area will be a le the, the cutting levers out here and then the mechanism comes around the coupler so I'm not sure at this point whether or not I'll be able to apply those quarter inch um, plates on the side to make it balanced but it's really not that heavy so if I can't put it in I'll sacrifice those uh, the, the, the feature of it being balanced for the, the cutting levers I'd rather have those on there so now what happens is you take this and you lift it up and then you can push it through to hold the coupler up or you drop it down and it goes back in again and then locks on the outside here locks down and it can't come out now this pin was actually two and a half inch square uh, steel. Uh, of course, this would be five sixteenths. And what happens? This this bolt right here, bolt right here, is um, into a small shim on the side. That L shaped, upside down L shaped shim there. And then there's one on this side as well. Now this bolt goes into the shim and stops this bolt here goes through the shim into this groove it's it's turned down on the end into this groove so that you can't it won't come out it won't pull out so I imagine one man show you can f flip that and then pull this act and then the coupler would then just very easily come up to position one other thing when I I don't know if I'm going to actually do it but when I make the covering that's going to go over the sheet metal covering there was a ramp that when you pulled this it ramped up on the ramp at this point to allow it to spin but I don't know if I can do that but for right now it works fine this way and I'll keep that also if you can see I get something to point with um, if you look at right here this little I'll, I'll go this way it's part of the shim and I couldn't figure out what they were for. And what they're actually for, I found out, is that it holds this from dropping down. Because I have it set where it won't drop down unless I turn it. So it stays in position. But this was probably really sloppy. So when it came through, it dropped down to lock it. But uh, uh, what it would do is keep it from falling down as it passed through the holes. Pretty clever. And uh, then the coupler, of course, I'll put this back. The coupler, of course, can swing sideways this way to, to allow for the for uh, you know turning, and then it, it has a little bit of up and down lateral. Of course, that's a Mercer Locomotive Works coupler on there, and well, that goes without question. And um, these are these. This is the Pensy's version of the cu drop coupler pilot. Um, the the uh, Commonwealth Steel Casting Company had one that was used on the New York Central Hudson's and some other locomotives, the FEF3s, and I don't know what a Great Northern, I guess, had them. So, a lot of engines had them. Uh, it was a more commonly known one. This was the Pensy's own design, and it is a pretty good design, actually. Um, 
and uh, now like I said I'm going to make the cover that goes over this I'm going to make the bottom half out of steel 332nd steel and then the top half I'm considering making that it's a little more intricate shape I'm considering making that out of copper and then marrying them together uh, silver soldering together and then blend it in with a with a grinder or whatever and uh, I'll just uh, weld it weld it and, and solder it or braze it to to the quarter inch this is quarter inch steel that I made the, the framework out of so in case I want to lift the locomotive I could just take a, a bar and we can lift it right you know right right by that bar very easily lift the whole locomotive up if a derailment occurs which often happens of course nobody gets away from those but uh, that's what I've been working on and uh, people have been asking me about uh, how it works and I uh, hope that this cleared it up for you. Uh, it was a mystery to me for our long years until I was able to get the actual prints and then uh, it cleared it quite uh, cleared it up for me. Um, it's been a, quite a quite a uh, interesting piece to make the um, the uh, center piece here this part here the, the pivot the counterweight and pivot was pretty complicated I had to make that out of several different pieces and uh, silver solder uh, actually uh, a heliarch TIG weld it all together and then form it and whatever and it's got you can see on the side here the holes here are square and how I did that was at this point right here and this point right here are two quarter inch steel plates that I welded together and machined them as one piece and cut the square holes in them and then um, I pivoted them around the pin here on the rotary table and this one was is square with the hole at 90 degrees say and the second one is at 14 degrees from this one so I just rotated the, the um, rotary table around 14 degrees and cut the square hole on the other half the center piece is one inch steel that I machined out whatever to, to, to so that the holes were hollow so to speak going through now the actual uh, counterweight the prototype the back part here I noticed on the prints it was actually hollow and there was a way to fill that with something it could be lead sand who knows what dirt anything to, to counterweight the, the coupler but uh, it's not really needed on here because it's very easy to lift up as you can see and then of course this is the the coupler how it opens just like the prototype and I'll have the, um, the cutting levers on here that don't work from either side and uh, we don't really plan on using it too much uh, except we're double head it would be the second engine it's the only time we'd ever use it and um, but I wanted it to work like everything else works on the locomotive I wanted that to work as well so there it is um, enjoy yourself and um, we'll talk to you soon on some other video